Hey, welcome to the Iguazu Air platform tutorial. My name is Gilad and I'm here to walk you through the product. So what is the Iguazu platform? We enable continuous delivery and automatic deployment of AI and GNI apps. This is often a challenge practitioners encounter after the initial phases of experimentation and development of AI and GNI models. For example, applications are rarely just one model, but a combination of different business logic functions. Once the application is deployed, there is a need to monitor and create a feedback loop to identify and correct issues. Furthermore, developing models is a repeatable process. So what is the best way to standardize this process where the space is quickly evolving and what's the best way to then automate the tasks? Finally, models such as GenAI create challenges related to risks such as data privacy, hallucinations, and malicious use, and therefore guardrails have to be applied throughout the entire lifecycle. So let's go to the platform and see it in action. This project view shows you all your data science projects with real-time counters for the number of jobs and real-time functions that are currently running and the number of jobs that are in a failed state. We see here several demo projects, and in this session, when I click on the project, you can see the project overview screen where you have a very comprehensive view about the project. You can see operational stats of the jobs and real-time functions that are currently running in the project, along with some information about other assets. From here, we can drill down to see more granular information about the model, features, jobs, and pipelines, real-time functions, and so forth. The artifact view enables you to see the different outputs that were created during the development process, including data and graph data. All these outputs are versioned and stored as part of the platform's experiment tracking capabilities. The model view includes several aspects. The first is the model artifacts, where it is possible to see information related to the model itself. Then we have the model endpoints that enable us to view the actual deployments of the models. Model endpoints run on serverless functions and a single function can host multiple models. Finally, we can see the real-time pipelines in action including all the transformations and actions that take place before and after running the model. This allows infinite flexibility with extremely user-friendly tools and processes. Jobs and workflows allow creating better automated processes, such as model training. The platform has integration with workflows, so you can run those individually or as part of a greater workflow. Finally, you can also schedule jobs to run in any future time or recurrent pattern. All code is stored. You can see all the code in the ML function view and call this version. This function can also be associated with a specific git commit. Real-time functions show a view of the current functions that are running in the background. This is where you get more fine-grained control over the serverless capabilities, such as the amount of memory, CPU, and GPU that those functions take, and the scalability parameters. You can also set up multiple triggers, so the functions are executed not just via HTTP, but you can also easily connect your existing code to streaming without having to write code that reads from the stream. Finally, we have the API gateway where it is possible to specify canary deployments to test models as well as perform rolling upgrades. I can also go to the project settings to set some attributes, manage permissions to the project where a member can be either a viewer, editor, or admin, and I can set project-level secrets to be used by the functions and jobs running within the project. The UI is not just for viewing the status, you can also use the UI to perform tasks. For example, if I'd like to perform a batch run, I can click on batch run, and I get a list of relevant functions in the function hub. Once I choose the function, I can set all the relevant parameters, and then select whether I'd like to run it immediately, or schedule the execution for a later time. You can also get services running in the platform on top of the Kubernetes cluster. The Kubernetes deployment could be a vanilla Kubernetes or cloud-based like AWS EKS, Azure AKS, or Google Cloud GKE. This is the view where the users can view and manage all those services in the platform. To name a few, we have services like Jupyter, Spark, MPI, Grafana, and others. To create a service, you just go through this quick wizard. As a data scientist, if you would like to create your own Jupyter, then give it a name, set up resources, then you can set up some custom parameters, and that's it. 
Once you do that, you're going to get your service up and running on the cluster in a few seconds. In most cases, the developer will spend their time using their IDE such as PyCharm or VS Code or cloud-based environments such as AWS SageMaker or Azure Machine Learning Studio. We also provide an easy-to-use SDK for working with the platform from remote, so you can leverage the power of this cluster even if you're working from your own laptop. There are several examples of end-to-end -end demos that are very useful to learn how to work with the platform. In the product, we have tools for administrators. You can manage your cluster storage, create and manage users and groups, as well as security policies, plus integration with LDAP. You can view events and alerts, and we have a comprehensive set of monitor reports to monitor your cluster usage, all the way down to individual pods. If you would like to learn more about the product, I suggest you check out our documentation site. We have more in-depth information there, and if you're a data scientist, I would recommend going directly to the AI and Gen AI services section. Furthermore, our YouTube channel includes additional material. I hope this video helps you better understand the platform. Please contact us if you have any questions or comments.